My sis and I were on the subject of the guy in my hometown that went on a short killing spree, and she brought this story up I told when it happened. About eight years ago, I stayed downtown. Back then, if you remember, Craigslist had a personal section. I never really dabbled in that, but being curious, I did. So I made an ad nothing spectacular and waited. Not much went down, just some scammers and bots, married people, etc. I get this one message from a young woman telling me how I sound interesting and would love to get to know me more. We exchanged pics. She exchanged an older pic, but she looked pretty cute in it. Had a bright smile and big blue eyes. She was nice, I just wasn't feeling her like that. She was 18 and I was 24 at the time, but also she was 7 months pregnant. We enjoyed conversations for a few days and we decided to link. She didn't stay far from me. She stayed more on the northeast side, just on the edge of downtown. This day it was a festival going on. I asked if she wanted to go, but she couldn't because her legs were tired and kinda sore. So I agreed to meet her at her place. She stayed in a northern slum. Not ghetto, but slum. The house was big, but also you could tell off bat that it was used as an apartment. Wasn't an appealing house, but there weren't many other appealing ones either. When I told her I'm outside, I see her come on the front porch. She was a small thing, all of about five foot zero tall, white with dark hair. Couldn't be no more than 9,110 pounds, and that was because of the pregnancy. Her baby bump was very noticeable. She had a small, chocolate Labrador puppy with her. They both were happy to see me. When I got close to her, I was surprised. She didn't have the same bright smile I saw in her pics. Her teeth were gray and her face looked like someone who was into heavy drugs. Her eyes still had light to them. But overall, she looked like a tired human being and not in the fatigued sense. I gave her a hug, made sure to watch my strength. We went into the place. There wasn't nothing sketchy about it. It stunk, like animals and weed. We went upstairs and I saw a black couple up there. They shut their door and it seemed like they were arguing. All the rooms upstairs seemed small and the ceilings were slanted. Her room was fitted pretty nice. She was a smoker, I smelled the ashtray stench. We decided to watch Pineapple Express. That was my first time seeing that movie. She complained about her legs a lot. I seen some little swelling on them, so I gave her legs a rub. I used her body lotion. She loved it a lot and appreciated it big time. We talked and it was getting late and I wanted to head out to downtown and catch the heat of the festivities. She looked like she enjoyed my company a lot, and as we were waving goodbye for some reason I just said to myself, man that chick seems troubled. I thought of burning sage when I got home. Like two days later, she hit me up saying her ex-boyfriend got kicked out of his place and he needed somewhere to stay. So me and her hanging out couldn't happen again which I didn't care, I just told her I understood and make sure she's safe. I left to Chicago to spend time with family. I came back a week later, and after getting my hair retwisted, I saw a realty sign with her last name on it when I was out for a walk. She had a unique last name. I decided to check on her. I sent her an email. No response. About five minutes later, I open up Facebook, and as I scrolled, I stopped immediately because I saw the very picture she first sent me. I'm like, why the hell is that pic on here? I click a link saying there was a triple homicide. I sat on the curb and was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I read the details and was shocked. She met a guy on Craigslist for sex. Her ex met up with him too, supposedly. He killed the ex-boyfriend and decapitated him. Left his body at a park I was familiar with. He took her and held her captive in his basement. He tortured her for a week. What made me so pissed was that he went to a sports bar down the street from me and told the bartenders how he has someone locked up in his basement right now. Nobody took it serious to call the police. That probably could have saved her. He strangled her and stuffed her in a suitcase. By then the police figured him out and he was on the run. When they stopped his car, he decided to take himself out. They found him probably because of the emails from Craigslist. I know they investigated my email. I deleted it immediately once I took all this in. About a month later, I was on Craigslist and I saw in the miscellaneous section about meeting scammers and such. I posted a reply about people being careful and I posted her story. 
Also, around then I had a guy I went to HS with who got caught robbing people for money on there. When I summarized her story I get a reply. It was from a lady demanding to know what I know. Come to find out it was her aunt. When I told her she wanted to talk on the phone so I did. I gave her my condolences and told her about the time we spent together. She told me her ex was pimping her out. Her life never was like that. Her parents were good people and confused that she took that path in life. That girl was just a baby. I've been around death before but nothing like that. Because what if I kept hanging with her? The crazier parts are, the guy had another woman in his place, but she escaped. She was living with him, and he made her a sex slave. But also, he was supposed to fly to Vegas to meet a lady for from a fetish site. But there were complications on his end. The day he committed the murder, he contacted the lady and told her he wanted to meet her ASAP. He was paying for the travel and everything, but she needed his info. She didn't go through with it, but she looked him up and happened to see his connection with a triple homicide. What's even more dark is that they didn't find her ex-boyfriend's head at the park, just his body. They found his head north of the city in 2019, like 25 miles away from his dead body. Why did he take that head? What'd he do with it to travel with it like that? The awkward thing is that there was a lady who lived with me a year later after that. Things were complicated and I had to kick her out. She moved into the exact room that Chick was in. I know because I had to come over there to give her something she left. This is also the girl that played a major part in my sister and her ex-boyfriend breaking up for good. People do come into your life for a reason, I suppose. I used Craigslist for business and some social events. But after that my approach became entirely different, and I became very cautious on who I met. P.S. He unalived himself after the end of the high-speed chase. The cops followed him and he shot himself. The woman was in the trunk of his car inside a suitcase. Went to the gas station down by my house. I go there daily. It was myself and my partner. We drove over with our two doggies. Small wiener dogs, one is five years always alert. A barker. Other is eleven weeks. Super friendly once we got there we parked at the pumps. My boyfriend asked what I wanted and went inside. After a couple minutes a man walked out from the station and went to his gold-colored Malibu parked at the next pump beside me. He was holding my phone pretending to not be looking. I do this often I don't like people and my older dog was in the driver window waiting. She was nit barking or growling. This guy approaches the window but still at a distance says, She is so cute, can I pet her? I replied with, I don't know she doesn't usually like people, but you can try. He reached towards her. Window was half down. My older dog jumped into the back seat and began barking normal behavior. He then leans into the car halfway and takes her out of my hands. I was trying to keep a grip and but didn't want to hurt my dog so I let go as my boyfriend was finishing up in the gas station. Kind of busy but can see him through the window. My puppy begins to screech as soon as he touches her and my hands leave her. She is screaming like she is in pain. I had adjusted myself and he awkwardly shoves her back to me as I'm trying to snatch her back and my boyfriend is coming out. He asks who the guy was I said I don't know. The guy then got into his car and drove away. We also drove away and went home. I told my boyfriend he wanted to pet the other dog but reached, grabbed the pup and why, but shoved her back real quick. I have no clue who he was or is. He said he was rude to the workers and was happy I was okay. A very quick scary interaction. I can't remember the exact year, but my nan had passed away, so we had to clean her house, and it was filled with so much stuff. I was around 14 at the time, and my parents were also extremely sad at what had happened so it was a rather depressing time for me and my sister, who were also dragged along to clear the house out. There were a lot of memories in this house, and we had spent many weekends around our nans. This was a time when she would always care for us and take care when our parents were away or on holidays by themselves. So we began the task of clearing out her house. At the time, it was a rather small house in the rural areas of Oregon, it was surrounded by trees and great oaks, and even had a pine forest bordering the border. 
This was amazing, and we'd often spend most afternoons playing outside in our garden and running through the forests. Our parents would yell at us, though, as we needed to also do our own fair share of the work, and clearing out the house was a mammoth task for only four people. Finally, my dad found a solution for us. Instead of just throwing everything away, he suggested that we should create some ads on websites like Craigslist or eBay to sell some of the stuff online. We kept the most valuable and sentimental antiques for ourselves things that meant a lot to us, and we wanted to take back to our own house. However, we had to get rid of many other things because we were planning to sell the house in the next week or two. So, my dad made a Craigslist ad and put up various items for sale. You won't believe this, but there were around 2,000 items that my dad managed to list by creating separate ads for each one. My mom suggested making one big ad with a brief description of everything for sale, but my dad is a perfectionist. He wanted to pay attention to every small detail, so he spent three or four hours every night listing each item one by one. All his effort paid off because we started getting hundreds of responses from interested buyers. People came to the house to check out the things we were selling. Some items got more attention than others. My nan lived a long life, reaching 102 years old. She lived alone for many decades, even after my grandfather passed away. Back then, my nan had a big collection of antiques, and while many of them didn't have much value, there were some china sets that were really special. They had intricate designs and interesting patterns that caught people's attention. Some folks were really interested in these china sets, and we got a lot of responses. These sets included mugs, knives, spoons, and things with woven and carved metal designs. I'm not exactly sure what to call them, but I'm doing my best to describe them. One day, a strange man came to visit us. I remember him knocking on the door to check out some of the cutlery and china sets. This man who visited had some eye issues, as they seemed to be looking in different directions. As kids, we were a bit scared because we didn't understand why he looked different. Sometimes kids can't help but stare and wonder about things that are unfamiliar. As he came in, I got a bad feeling from him, but my parents seemed unaware of it. They greeted him politely with the usual, Hello, how are you? and directed him towards the china set to check it out. My dad was under a lot of stress during that time, juggling his job and clearing out the house, so he was quite busy. But he made the bad mistake of leaving the man to look at the china set while he went off and continued to clear boxes from the upstairs. My mom was still downstairs with us while my dad was working like a headless chicken, piling things into boxes upstairs. I was sat at the computer trying to figure out this Craigslist ad and accept more and more offers. I was also doing communications and talking to people and helping them with what they wanted. My sister was sitting on the sofa, but I'm not sure as I can't remember what she was doing at the time and my mom was in the kitchen. So this guy had quite literally been left alone downstairs with us. I kept glancing over at times and he was just looking at the cutlery and the china set. He had it very close to his eyes and he seemed to be paying attention to the fine detail on the patterns. But I don't blame him, as they really were beautiful. Some of them had Chinese-style patterns, and some were even Indian-style cutlery sets, and it was very impressive. Maybe he was just one of those people who had a knack or an interest in those types of individual unique things. Anyway, I continued to scroll through my Craigslist messages on my dad's account when all of a sudden, I heard my mom screaming. I didn't know what was happening, but when someone in your family yells out like that, you feel their pain deeply. I know it's hard to explain, but especially when you're younger, you have a strong connection with your parents at least that's how I feel. My mom's scream was terrifying, and it made me gasp. My dad heard it too and started running down the stairs, but before he could reach us, I heard loud crashing and banging noises from upstairs. It seemed like he was stumbling over boxes or dropping things while he was still busy clearing out stuff. I looked around and saw my mom in the kitchen. She was pinned against the fridge by the man who had come to see the china set. It was the scariest and most disturbing thing I could ever recall. The man visiting us started trying to take my mom's clothes off, and she fought back. Suddenly, my dad rushed down the stairs and immediately put the man in some kind of hold, taking him down to the floor. My mom was gasping for breath and looked like she might pass out. 
My dad did a great job restraining the man, and he told me to call 911 right away. I ran to my nan's old phone, which was covered in dust, and dialed 911. I tried my best to explain what was happening, but I was in such shock that my words didn't come out as I planned. It was a really scary and chaotic situation. My younger sister was crying and went upstairs all alone. The whole incident was so frightening that even now, the family still talks about it and remembers what happened. My dad was a real hero as he saved my mom from that awful man who didn't really care about the china sets. He was just trying to harm my mom. It's essential to take care of your family as they mean a lot, and we need to be there for each other. I had some baby scooters lying around outside the front of my apartment that the kids weren't riding anymore, so I thought I'd post them up for free to a good home. I spoke to a woman via text and gave her my address. I waited all evening for her to come and she never showed. Around midnight I heard a car pull in near the front of my apartment, but didn't think too much of it because cars always came and went. I did happen to look out my window and saw a red VW Beetle pulling out. The next day I went outside to find not only were the free scooters missing, but my daughter's brand new tricycles they got for Christmas, a laundry hamper full of towels and rags that I had put outside so I could clean the next day, my husband's dolly, and some other odds and ends. All of the, those things were in a completely separate location from where the free scooters were which means she snooped around my property quickly and quietly and helped herself to all my belongings. She knew exactly what was for free because of the picture and our conversation we had earlier. I tried messaging her and she'd never reply. Finally she replied and said she couldn't make it the night before and she doesn't want them anymore and she's not coming. I was livid. A couple days later I typed her phone number into Craigslist and found ads for her yard sales she has every weekend. I drove by the address given and right there in her yard were all of my belongings. I called the police and they said I had no proof, but they would drive by and ask, but if she says she didn't take them, then they have to leave it at that. I tell my mother-in-law about it, and she decides to take matters into her own hands. Her gangster-ass grandma self and her sister roll up to this lady's yard sale. They approach her and say, you stole my son's belongings and point out exactly what they are. The woman denies it. This is when my mother-in-law gets really gangster lol. She starts walking up and down the street with her sister screaming, This woman's a thief. She stole my son's belongings and stole two tricycles from two little girls. Just screaming it for the entire neighborhood to hear. People start coming outside to view the spectacle that was unfolding. The thief chases my mother-in-law down and says, SHHHH, 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 okay, 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 shut the F up. Be quiet, be quiet. You can take your stuff back. When they're done loading the car, my mother-in-law says, Where's the tricycles? The woman says she sold them. A little while later, I had no idea any of this was going on, by the way. My mother-in-law rolls up to my house with my stuff and also hands me $70. She got the woman to replace the costs of the tricycles. I've never given anyone my address again for free stuff since then. Also edit to say that I just remembered that she also stole my kids' car seats. F that bitch. At least leave the car seats. So shameless. I had just moved to a new city. As a musician, I was looking for people to play with and gig. I replied to an ad that read, Established project searching for bass player. Awesome, I thought. So after exchanging an email, this guy calls me and starts talking shop. He sounds experienced and dedicated. He says he's got several songs ready to go, gigs lined up, and all the band members are very talented musicians. At this point, I am incredibly excited so we set up a time for the first rehearsal. So I show up at the rehearsal space, and soon after I get a call from this dude saying that there was some problems with the other band members and it would just be him and I this time. I decide to stay and give it a shot anyway. In walks this person, who is wearing way too skinny jeans, fishnet fingerless gloves, and what seemed like a tub of gel on his hair. Tattooed on eyebrows and a very noticeable butt implant. At this point I'm like okay I'm not going to judge a book by its cover. So we go in the room and he plugs in his iPod to the paw. 
He proceeds to play what I can only describe as ubersexual, low-quality 80s synth-pop titled Dominate Me, accompanied by exaggerated hip thrusting. Worst part, he really digs my playing. He is into it. More dance moves ensue. I am polite, so I actually play through the entire hour of practice. He proposes we go back to his place to make some music. I refused. I was selling a guitar on Craigslist as I had more than enough, and this one just didn't get the attention it deserved. Listed it at 600 bucks firm. The guitar was a limited run, Schecter C1 with a Floyd Rose bridge, a custom camo finish and factory distressed brass hardware. Brand new the thing listed at over 1k. Figured 600 was a fair price all things considered, especially since it had no dings or scratches. Couldn't even tell the thing was used. A few days after posting it is get a guy texting me about how he'd happily trade for it along with a smaller cash offer. Politely explained that I wasn't looking for trades and that the price was firm. He decides to go on a rant about how I'm mentally unstable. No one is going to pay that much for such a piece of shit. You're lucky if you get even half the offer I have you. As if 150 bucks with a little practice amp is somehow worth it. Told him thanks for the criticism, but I know what my gear is worth. This lead to five days of relentless texts and emails from this dude. All rage filled, each more insulting than the last. He texts me again on day six asking if the guitar was still for sale, and if I'd do business with him if he gave me more than what I was asking. As if I'd do business with someone who insulted my knowledge of my gear, my intelligence as a person, and acted like a great a cock nozzle. So I was driving by myself on a highway in Maine, cranking killer tunes, slamming Mountain Dew big gulps, and sucking back American spirit lights. Decided to go hog wild at a Taco Bell drive through and ordered an enormous amount of food extra fixins. So I'm devouring the Taco Bell. Had a full menu assortment. Live mass. Of course, about 40 minutes after I ate, my stomach begins seizing and cramping. There was to be no refunds, no returns. Luckily, I see a rest stop coming up in about two miles. I floor it and pull in. It's about 1.30 a.m., and it seems pretty vacant. There's one other vehicle in the lot, windows steamed up. I assume it's just another road tripper who had to pull over to rub one out. We've all been there. No judgment. I get out of my car and run into the men's room. I was holding the bottom of my pants when I ran in because I wasn't sure I was going to make it. Finally, I'm in the stall and it's not a good scene. Figuring I would be in there a while, I brought my smokes and a copy of Mad Magazine. I always keep in my car for emergencies like this. I'm working on my fourth American spirit when I hear another person come in. Footsteps stop. I hear him taking deep breaths. I holler out, hey man, I'd keep those breaths shallow. No response. I can see dude's feet right in front of the stall. They're huge. Got to be at least a size 17. Dirty as shit, too. I sit in silence staring at these huge shoes. Sudden ass blasts squeeze out and the sound echoes in the empty restroom. All of a sudden, guy starts pounding on the door, then grabbing the top and shaking it. I'll be out in a minute, you spaz, I screamed. Then it stops. I hear the footsteps again and then a lot of squeaking. Then footsteps again and the door opening and slamming shut. Of course there was no toilet paper in the stall, and it was not a clean pinch as you can imagine. I had to use my mad magazine. Alfred E. Newman has never been so disrespected. I exit the stall and see in marker written on the mirror, see you outside, and it was signed Nitro. I'm born and bred in Maine. I've met a lot of guys who go by Nitro. Not a one do I want to meet alone at a rest stop in the middle of nowhere. I'm terrified. I hatch a plan that I am just going to go for it. I open the restroom's door and sprint to my car. Not looking back, I just run. I hear a shuffle and footsteps behind me. Ag, I hear behind me. I left my car unlocked because it's a piece of shit and I get right in. I get the car going and do a bit of a burnout and speed off. I see in my rear view mirror the silhouette of a massive man. He threw his hat on the ground and began jumping up and down as I sped down the highway. No idea what this guy's intentions were, but this was easily a top five scary moment for me, 
and I can't really bring myself to poop in a public restroom since. I was looking to try and make some friends. Stupid teenager me posted in the platonic section to try and see if maybe someone wanted to chat. I was also very lonely. A guy answered, about 34 or so. Great, we start chatting, some mutual interests. No intention of ever taking it anywhere, sexual or into the physical world. One day he tells me that I'm attractive half and that I'm his sex slave now. I protest, and he responds with texting me, Do you want me to kill your entire family? I know where you live, where you go to school. I can kill you in a heartbeat. Of course, this scared the F out of 17-year-old me. He had a list of demands, all seemingly simple. Write this on your body with eyeliner, send a picture of it, etc. Nothing I couldn't handle. I complied, scared out of my mind. He told me to create an ad for the hookup section and essentially act as a prostitute for him. He wanted me to write prices on my chest and rob anyone who didn't comply. I had sex with some of the people that he told me I should do, but I never did any money exchange and just planned to pay this creep out of my savings. It got worse from there. He was obviously manipulative, and one day he told me to send him pictures. I was pretty decent at image manipulation, so I positioned myself in a way to make it look like I was naked. He was pleased, and I went back to completely wearing my pants. Later he wanted a pic of something else, and my dumbass forgot the previous no pants rule. He forced me on camera to take a knife to my knees until they bled, then kneel on the carpet. I was reaching my breaking point, and he sensed that. He upped his threats, describing in detail how he would lock me in a closet and use me as a ass slave at parties. How he would arm me non-stop and make me watch as he killed those I loved. One day he pushed it too far. He asked what I was doing, and I mentioned that I was babysitting my three-year-old cousin. He asked, nay, demanded that I take dirty pictures of her and send them to him. Demanded that I molest her on camera. I filled out an anonymous police report, sent screenshots, and blocked him on everything. I do not know what happened. I don't know if the reports were ever investigated, or if he was arrested. I just know that he's out of my life, the police were alerted, and I'm safe. I never really had a horror story, but a few odd ones. I was selling a minibike, got all the usual, thing is garbage, I'll give you the dollar twenty it's worth in scrap if you bring it to me, BS. It was taking a while to sell, so I went to look to make sure it was priced competitively. I listed it two or three times, but noticed one of the ads for mine was almost twice as much. That's odd, I don't see how I made that typo. Then I notice it's from a couple towns over, and the description is tweaked a little. I sent the guy an email asking a few questions about it, specifically things on it that are in my pictures he copied into his ad, and he BS'd some pretty good answered, but stopped replying when I asked for more pics. I have no clue what his end game with that was. Another is from a couple years back when people still used tube TVs, before Goodwill and Salvation Army even refused to take donated ones. My parents had a half-decent one but upgraded to a flat screen. I put the old CRT TV on Craig's list for $30 or so. Not too many good offers one guy wants it, gives a sob story about his girlfriend with fibromyalgia needing it, and even though the ad specified pickup only he can't do the half hour drive, so I'm working near him and agree to meet up with him, he haggles me down to $20, whatever. The night before I ask if we're still on, he claims to only have $15 to his name till the first of the month and asks will that be good enough, or he can throw in his girlfriend's old black and white TV as a partial trade. Fine, I just want the thing gone at this point. I wake up at 5 a.m. to load this beast into my car before work, then text him that afternoon to let him know I'm getting off work to head to the place we agreed to meet. He replies with, sorry got a better deal from someone. And another that's not a horror story. I bought a Nitro RC car off someone that supposedly only needed a small clip to get running. $100 in parts later, I still couldn't get it to run right, so I decided to cut my losses and sell or trade it to someone who knew what they were doing. Found someone who agreed to trade me a tablet for it, what I was looking for. I got his life story leading up to his engagement, his fiancée leaving him, 
him finding an Amazon gift card she left behind, and him blowing it on a tablet he didn't need and hence now it's up for trade. Whatever I didn't have anywhere to be. He brought his collection of functioning RCs. He already had to the gas station we agreed to do the trade at, and we spent almost an hour ripping around one of them around the parking lot then. I don't remember what it was, but the thing was at least three feet long and an absolute beast. I was trying to get away from this money pit hobby, and went home tempted to spend ten plus more to get a badass functioning RC.